welcome back to my channel. So for today, I'm going to be doing day 19 of my beautiful creatures list, or should I say number 19, uh, since I'm not really doing it day by day anymore. But um, yeah, so the theme for this one is eyes. For this theme, I kind of wanted to go back to my 2015 Drawloween series. Um, that was the first time I did like a daily type challenge and I did a challenge where I have a theme and drew along with it and I I had a really good time that time and one of the things that was on the list that ended up being good but was challenging was the theme of like eyeball. Um, so with the theme of eyeball, I did a Cyclops couple at a Halloween party and I put lots of eyeballs in the background. Um, and I was thinking about kind of revising that when I added the eyes to the list, I knew I wanted to do something like that, but I left it open ended so I could do anything. I could even do like a spider one with lots of eyes, but I still thought maybe I'd go back to the Cyclops thing. Uh, but while I was sketching, I just felt like doing the three eyed thing instead. I had done a three eyed fairy in September, just a few months. I did the sketch by the way, back in October. So I kind of revisited it and I wanted to do something kind of like opposite of what I was originally intending to. So I was originally intending to do like a gothic type character or a spooky type character or something with a slightly creepy edge um, with three eyes. But instead I decided to twist that and I made her kind of a preppy Barbie type character. Um, I wanted her to be wearing a Letterman jacket and kind of being like, I don't know, a cheerleader at high school. But she looks totally normal and super pretty, except she has three eyes. So that's kind of what I was going for with this one. I didn't really use reference for the Letterman jacket, so it doesn't look quite right. I just put a jacket on her, but I was also going for like kind of a comic booky, uh, current day vibe. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes sense to anybody else, but um, it's just some of the stuff I'd been looking at recently. And uh, I was experimenting a lot with this drawing to do a bit more effort into her face to make her look like one step more towards semi-realistic. Um, I've been experimenting with my noses a lot because I'm really not sure what I'm happy with for drawing noses yet. So I've been flip-flopping with experimenting with that. Um, and yeah, I just, I really liked how the sketch came out. The first part of the sketch uh, isn't recorded because I did it off camera because I was just kind of in a get it done mood and I just didn't want to sit at the desk to sketch but I did show you me transferring the very messy sketch onto the watercolor paper and from there I refined the sketch a lot so you saw most of the sketching process. Um, the inking went really really well which is amazing for me because <laughs> uh, I always tend to mess up the inking somehow so I was really stoked about that. Uh, it took me a really long time to actually finish this piece, though. I mean, I started it back in November or October, sorry, and it must have been before Halloween. I can't honestly remember, but while I was editing the clips, I could hear like myself listening to Halloween movies. So that had to have been before Halloween because usually to me, the day after Halloween, I'm like, all right, this is dead to me. I don't want to watch that anymore. Um, <laughs> so... I think I did the watercolor part in December and the watercolor went super well with this one too. I think I was just kind of in the groove that day when I started the um, the skin coloring. It just went so well. I just took my time with it. I did a lot of wet on wet methods and a lot of glazing and I was so happy with how the skin turned out. I decided to go for, since I'm going for a brighter like normally Barbie like image. I wanted to also make the skin coloring very um, soft shading, slightly more one tiny step towards semi-realistic. I'm not saying it is semi-realistic. It's just my style with a tiny little step towards that way. And I was just really kind of proud of how the skin came out. I really like it. Throughout this whole process of this drawing, I feel like I've learned a lot and I experimented a lot and it just really paid off. When it came to doing the background color, I decided to experiment instead of using the same blue and the same green that I use to make blue green normally, I decided to switch it up and I just took a tiny little sample of each blue I have, each green I have, mixed it together and I found what color would give me the best result. And the background color turned out to be a mix of cerulean blue and phalo green, which I honestly thought would be a terrible mix because they're both super bright. But actually, it's amazing. I absolutely adore this color. It's so bright. It's so vivid. It's so, uh, it's just beautiful. So it kind of made me realize like 
all of those videos that I personally watch on my own time to learn about watercolor from all of these like watercolor artists who have been doing it for decades. They're always talking about things like um, pigments in the watercolors, uh, single pigment colors, what each pigment means, and mixing colors, and muddy colors, all of these terms that I think I understand, but I don't quite understand at all. But something about mixing these two colors for the first time, stepping out of my comfort zone and just experimenting, just made that click. And I started to realize I need to research more about pigments and watercolors and how this works. So that's why I went and bought all of those watercolors in December because of this drawing, because of that one instance where I decided to mix all the colors together and see what happened. So that was kind of cool. It's like a little eureka moment for me. If there's one thing about this drawing I don't like though, something went awry when I was coloring the jacket. Like I said, I did not look up reference for a Letterman jacket. When I did, I was like, oh, this isn't really quite how it's cut. But I still just wanted her to have like a casual jacket, kind of like a comic booky uh, slash meets urban fantasy type outfit, if you guys know what I mean. Um, a lot of those times the girls will wear like a jacket over top and uh, run around outside finding vampires and werewolves and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just babbling now though. Um, so since it didn't quite fit what I was going for, instead I just colored it um, complementary colors that I had already used throughout the rest of the drawing so that it just tied in and felt like it fit more. And I went with the same two, two colors that I used for the background, but just separate it. So I think it looked really vibrant and bright and it just fit really well. But I wanted to do complementary colors for the whole drawing. So um, I just picked a triad of complementary colors on my color wheel and that was yellow, purple, and blue-green. So for the, red, the rest of the jacket, I just did a purple, but either it was the paper giving out because I fussed with this part a lot. I added a lot of color, took it off, added water, took it off, um, or maybe it was the paint that I had used, but it, the color of the purple just got really grainy towards the end and I was really kind of upset about that. I tried a lot of things to try to fix it, but it wasn't going away. So in the end with the color pencil, I added some purple to the jacket to try to fix that, but it still didn't quite fix it. On the good side though, I don't feel like this is a focus in the drawing. I feel like um, because the background color is so bright and vivid, uh, your focus goes more towards there. And I use the same color for her eyes, which made it darker. So I think your eye goes to her eyes and then to the background. So it's not as noticeable, but it's still something I kind of regret, um, but I'll have to learn from next time. Another thing I tried different was when I did the color pencil, I still felt like I needed a little bit more shading in the skin, but since I had already done very soft shading, I didn't want any harsh lines from adding color pencil. So I took my Copic colorless blender and I used the tip side that I like never used, the broad side, and I used that to liquefy the color pencil, which works perfectly, it's amazing, but be careful if you wanna try this because it will destroy your tip over time. Um, the color pencil will get up into the tip and it will mess it up. But I don't think it will destroy the marker itself. It's just that it could ruin the tip. So as I was doing that, I was quickly rubbing off any excess from the tip to kind of preserve it. And also, like I said, I'm using the tip side that I never use. So if I can still use this marker with markers, but I use the brush side for the markers. But yeah, that worked really, really well. So <laughs> overall, I'm just so happy with this piece. It's one of my recent favorites and I'm so happy to be sharing it with you guys. So I really hope you like it too. And if you do like this video, then definitely let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and leaving me a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I post art related videos every week. And if you'd like to own a print of this drawing or maybe some merchandise with this image on it, definitely check out my Redbubble shop because I will be uploading this for prints and like bags and stuff like that really, really soon. The link is in the description below. So definitely check that out. It is available now. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. You can also see my social media links. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and DeviantArt. Um, and that is all in the description below. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.